Okay, so <clears throat> um, when you Google anything to do with tire, you do get that problem that everything's about about the tires that go on your car. So you have to, you have to. I often, I often put ancients in, and um, I, I, I like quizzes. Okay, so I, I like quizzes, and, and one of the things with quizzes is is you, is you just gen, general knowledge that you pick up without studying things. You can, you can know you can know quite a little bit, and uh, if, if you had a quiz and somebody asked about ancient Egypt and a pharaoh or Babylon or Assyria or Greece and Alexander the Great. Lots of the general public would get would be quite good at guessing the answers because it's general knowledge. Uh, but this city, the ancient city of Tyre, it tends to be something that only when you get into the Bible do you ever learn anything about it. It's kind of it's kind of invisible historically um, or, unless you really search for it. And there's reasons for that. There's reasons for that. I would argue that this is probably the greatest city the world has ever seen. Is the city of Tyre. Okay, so um, uh, uh, we, we're going to look at prophecies to do with it, particularly Ezekiel 26, 27 and 28, I think is how it goes. And uh, it's in a particular order. Let's get going. <coughs> yeah. Got to move me, got to move me face. There you go. <clears throat> so the beginning of Ezekiel 26 and it came to pass in the 11th year in the first day of the month that the word of the Lord came to me Ezekiel saying uh, probably probably the 11th year since since they were taken to Babylon at uh, that time and and, uh, and um, son of man because because the tire has said against Jerusalem a heart she is broken that was the gate of the people she has turned it into me I shall be replenished now she is laid waste. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Tyrus, and I will cause many nations to come up against thee as the sea causes his waves to, uh, whatever it says at the bottom, I can't see the bottom, okay, uh, uh, to come up. So, so uh, Tyre has been around for, for, for a long time, a long, long time, a long, long, long time, and uh, it's mentioned with Solomon that the king hit, hit him, uh, if that's how you pronounce it, he he helped Solomon build the temple. Him and Solomon were mates. It was it was a it was a very amicable um, arrangement. And now there's this prophecy against them. The reason is given because as Jerusalem fell, as Judah fell to the Babylonians, uh, the people of Tyre they 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 were they were a, a trading uh, city. Their main thing was trade altogether, and um, trade's generally a good thing, but. Uh, there can be problems with it. And uh, they took advantage of the fall of Jerusalem. They're all friends, including selling their people. They sold people of Judah in their markets. So as as, as Judah and Jerusalem collapsed, they made profits out of it. And uh, there's lots of things in business that are, that are, that are not a model, they're a model, but some things are a model. Uh, and and uh, um, uh, the, the Lord just wasn't happy. He made this prophecy against them. And... Um, a particular, it's specific in that it says, I shall cause many nations to come up against thee, like, like the waves of the sea. That's how it's described. And in verse 4, it says, And they that, uh, shall destroy the walls of Tyrus, break down her towers. I will, I, I will also scrape her dust from her and make her like the top of a rock. And it shall be a place for the spreading of nets in the, mid, the nets in the midst of the sea. For I have spoken, it says the Lord God, and it shall become a spoil to the nations. And their daughters which are in the fields shall be slain by the sword, and they shall know that I am the Lord. I'm not going to particularly, that, that's a little a little uh, a branch of the prophecy, is the daughters in the field. So, so I'm going to show you in a minute, Tyre was a city, uh, and the daughters in the field, you have Biblos and Sidon up north, uh, Carthage in Cadiz, uh, 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 North America, uh, North Africa, and uh, south of Spain. They were Phoenician um, settlements. They would be her daughters in the field, and and that's that that's a that's a, a slightly different uh, a story which I'm not going to go into, uh, but that's accurate too. So uh, I'm missing the map. I'll show you the map in a minute. So what what happens uh, at this time, the time of Ezekiel, probably just after he's prophesied this, uh, or not long after. Uh, uh, this happens, says, for thus says the Lord God, that behold, I will, I will bring upon Tyrus Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, a king of kings from the north, with horses, with chariots, and with horsemen and companies, and much people. Uh, and then, and then, historically, that's what happens. 
and and uh, um, uh, what happened was the I think it was a thirteen year siege. So so the Babylonians attacked Tyre, the city of Tyre. You, you really need a map. I should have put it in earlier, but it's coming up in a minute. That uh, uh, they attacked Tyre for thirteen years, and Tyre is a little bit like New York. So you've got you've got mainland, and you in New York you've got mainland and an island called Manhattan, haven't you? And Manhattan Island is where all the money's made. Well, Tyre was very similar. It had the mainland, and it also had quite a sizable island. And they, they lived on both. And when Nebuchadnezzar attacked it, he eventually took the mainland, but he couldn't get at the island. He couldn't get at it. And uh, uh, so, so in Ezekiel 29, the Lord's referring to this uh, uh, that has happened. It says, Son of man, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, king of Babylon, caused his army to serve a great service against Tyre. Every head was made bald and every shoulder was peeled. Yet he had no wages, uh, nor for his army, for Tyre, uh, 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 for the service that he served against it. Uh, th therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will give the land of Egypt to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and uh, he shall take her multitude and take her spoil and take her prey and she be for the wages of his service. So again, historically, that's what happened. That, that, uh, that, uh, what, what, what I want to get into our heads is an image of Tyre, of how how fabulous it was, how strong it was. When you read the Old Testament or, or Old Testament time history, you don't really read of uh, the Tyrians going to war. Because that wasn't their thing. They traded and they had a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Uh, and with that money, they, they employed mercenaries and they were very strong. Right, but they didn't actually have to go to war. A because they were into trade, not into conquest, and B because they because they they, they were strong, and uh, so so, so uh, uh, generally you don't read about them. But here, when they're attacked, uh, they could very much withhold attack, and uh, that that's a, an artist's impression of the of Nebuchadnezzar's uh, uh, assault on the city. So uh, forget the bit in the middle because that comes later in in the, in the presentation. Uh, but you see on the green, on, on, the, uh, on the right of my screen, it says, site of the coastal city of Tyre, destroyed by the Babylonians. So that was all the city. And they, they flattened it. They flattened it. But uh, uh, the Tyrians withdrew onto this island. There's an island in the south which is now underwater. Uh, but there was this island in the south. And this was a walled island, by the way. Um, I can't remember the seven hundred meters, maybe from from the coast to the to the coast of the. Um, I can't remember the, the measurements. So they withdrew to that island, and Nebuchadnezzar couldn't get at them. So so they continued, and the prophecy continues. So in chapter twenty six, it describes this destruction of Tyre, which would be like the waves of the sea, and you could say that Nebuchadnezzar was the first wave. But chapter twenty seven is a bit different. Uh, next one. Right, so so uh, th 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 this is the chapter that really describes the great city, and and it says in 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 verse one it says, the word of the Lord came again unto me saying, now thou son of man take up a lam lamentation for Tyrus, and say unto Tyrus, thou art uh, oh that thou art situated at the entry of the sea, which a merchant um, uh, of the people from of many hours. Thus says the Lord God, uh, O Tyrus, thou hast said. I am of perfect beauty. And it, then it says, Thy borders are in the midst of the seas. Uh, thy builders have, have perfected thy beauty. So in chapter 26, it describes ba uh, uh, Babylon coming against them and them left being left as an island. And then in chapter 27, it kind of picks them up. It picks them up in their, in their new state, which is now they're only an island. Uh, because in cha before chapter 26, historically, they weren't just an island. Their borders weren't just in the midst of the seas, but now their borders are in the midst of the seas. And it's describing this island. And, it, you know, it might have been uh, uh, because the next thing we're going to really concentrate on that happened to them happened 300 years later. Uh, but, you know, uh, they're perfectly well described, even though it hasn't happened to them yet. And it, this is an artist's impression of the of the city of Tyre on the island. You see the walls. Uh, uh, they had harbours. Uh, they had a great navy. Uh, we'll talk about their navy in a little while, uh, quite soon. Very formidable. Very formidable. And uh, so in, in chapter 27, 
of Ezekiel, you've got this incredible chapter of places. It talks about their trade, okay? So, so chapter 27 describes their trade, the places they traded with and the things they traded in. And you won't find a list like that anywhere else. It's long, it's detailed, it's wonderful. It's very interesting. It's intriguing in many ways. And as much that you can gain from it to see the nature of the city and to the nature of the Tyrians and the Phoenicians uh, uh, generally. So after, after Nebuchadnezzar, they become perfect in beauty again. They had everything. They had absolutely everything. And, uh, and, and, and you know, there's lots of descriptions. So it mentions these places and, and things to do with them. It says, they have Persia and Lud and foot or put within thine army thy, thy men of war they hang the shields and helmets in thee they set forth uh, thy comeliness the men of Arvad with thine armies but upon thy walls round about the, the Gamadims within thy towers they hang their shields upon thy walls round about they have made thy beauty perfect and it's a description of uh, mercenaries the strongest and the best soldiers that, that in the known world, in the world that then was, uh, they had them. Although they weren't, they weren't a, a warlike nation, a warlike city, city state, if you like. And uh, but it talks here about about they hang their shields upon the walls round about. And I, I think that's something you still see in the modern world. I think it says it also in something similar in in um, in the Song of Solomon about about David's army. That's very poetic, the Song of Solomon. But they hang their shields upon the walls round about. And lots of modern nations will show off their armour. They'll show off their armour. Uh, they, they, you know, North Korea is quite famous, isn't it? If North Korea shows off their armour, that'll be on the TV. It used to be Russia in Red Square. The British do it too. I'm sure the Americans do it too for different reasons. Uh, to, to say that, you know, we're strong. Don't mess with us. And uh, this is... This is um, that's an intercontinental ballistic missile. We weren't allowed to take them to school, all right? Uh, I, I, I say as well, when you had to go to some park to watch Everton, you weren't allowed to take missiles in, otherwise I would have took one of them. And, and uh, the other thing with that one is I think he'd have a job going around the roundabouts if he got to a roundabout. But it, it's just this, uh, uh, what they did is what people do today. I, 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 the more you read about the ancient world, what, 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 one, one, one thing that helps you to gain more about what you're reading is think of those people who are the smartest people are today and kind of similar to people today. You know, not stupid or particularly evil more than people today. Uh, um, sometimes we become that, that generation that's wise in our own eyes because we were so much better than the people of the past. That you learn nothing, and it's actually not true. So, uh, but yeah, just a description of, of, of those people and hanging their arms, and it's what people do today. It says, um, is the one missing there? Oh, no. In verse 5, it talks about their ships, because this was their thing, was the sea. They've made all their, their ships, boards of fir trees of Sina. They've taken cedars from Lebanon to make masts for thee. Of the oaks of Bashan, they have made thine oars. The company of the Asherites have made benches of ivory brought out of the Isles of Chisholm. These were some ships. These were some ships. Uh, they had uh, cedars from Lebanon to make masts. Right? These are impressive ships. And uh, so, he, 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 sorry, that this shouldn't have been the first map, but you've got Tyre over there in, in a place that's called Phoenicia, just north of Israel. Just north of the the uh, Israel and, and and the parts in red are their are their um, uh, settlements. I'm trying to think of the right word for it. Uh, in North Africa, Cadiz, as I say, Carthage in uh, sorry, North North South Spain, Cadiz, North Africa, Carthage, uh, little places uh, that they had, and they trade around and they they, they build settlements in these places ju just for free trade, just for free trade, and. Um, uh, the, the, the famous cities that are north of them, Sidon and Byblos. Byblos is where you get the name Bible from, uh, because Byblos means book. Uh, do you reckon the Phoenicians invented the alphabet? Uh, it may well have been the Israelites, and the Phoenicians got the credit, because you know there, there was there was a lot of crossover uh, uh, between them. So th this is an image of a of a, of a there's the alphabet. Uh, there's an image of a Phoenician ship. Uh, 
Where are we going? Oh yeah. So it says, fine linen embroiders work from Egypt, which which thou spread spread forth to be thy sail, blue and purple. This is still talking about the ships from the Isles of Elisha, uh, was that which covered thee. The inhabitants of Zidon and Arvad were thy mariners. Thy wise men, O Tyrus, they were in thee, were thy pilots. Uh, the ancients uh, of Gebel and the wise men thereof were, were in thee. Uh, uh, thy caucus keep the ships in ship shape. All the ships of the sea with their mariners were to occupy thy merchandise. Now, in the ancient world, uh, generally in the you know the the, the, uh, the world that then was is, is is around the Mediterranean Sea, and, and and generally what people did when they sailed was they sailed around the coast. The Mediterranean is like a big bowl; you can slip out of Gibraltar if you want to, but that's not that easy, and uh, and then you don't know where you are, right? Uh, so they would sail around the coast because they didn't know how to sail away. He didn't know how to do it. It wasn't safe to sail away. He didn't know how to guide themselves. But the Phoenicians did. They sailed away. And and the Bible, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention a couple of things that they did or might have done. Um, uh, but remember what the Bible says is that thy wise men, O Tyrus, that were in thee were thy pilots. So in his reign, uh, the Greek historian Herodotus who is known as the father of historians, that's, that's his kind of general title, uh, said Nico II, he, he, was, he was a pharaoh of Egypt, sent out an ex ex expedition of Phoenicians, which in three years sailed from the Red Sea around Africa to the Straits of Gibraltar and back to Egypt. So it's saying, Herodotus is saying that the Phoenicians circumnavigated Africa. And, and um, uh, that's not that hard, actually, um, uh, well, it, it, it's impressive in those days, but I think you've just got to keep the sun on one side of you and just keep going, you know, because go, going around Africa is fairly straightforward in, in a way. You can see that that's the idea that they sailed. They're wise men with their pilots. Got a quiz question for you, right? Got a quiz question for you. Africa is three times the size of Europe. Talking about land, uh, land mass, three times the size of Europe. 20% of the world's land is African. Uh, which do you suppose, remember now, uh, Africa is three times the size of Europe. Which do you suppose has the longest coastline, Europe or Africa? It seems impossible, but it's actually Europe because Africa doesn't have very, very few harbours and inlets and navigable rivers, which actually affects, uh, this is not to do with the city of Tyre particularly, but it affected the way Africa in the ancient world could trade. Because if you're going to trade, you need harbours, not, not just coastline. It's not easy to trade off a coast. You need a harbour. Uh, but Africa has got very few. And where there was, by the way, where there was in the ancient world, that was where you got the, the best prosperity. And, and trade brings all sorts of things, not just not just goods. It brings, um, it brings knowledge and intellect and science and a better life. So, yeah. Just, just, just an idea of, 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 a, of a Phoenician ship. Going around here, there, and everywhere, doing their trade. Um, also, you know, so it, so Herodotus said that they went around Africa, uh, and it took them three years. Um, but it talks here, and this is back in Solomon's day. Uh, for the king has a king Solomon has a navy at sea of Tarshish, with the navy of Hir Hiram. Once in three years came the the, the navy of Tarshish. That's Cadiz, really, Spain. Bringing gold, silver, ivory, apes, and peacocks. Now, they could all come from from India, but they could also come from Africa, uh, and and you've got the same thing of of, of once every three years. Uh, so, and then it just goes through these th these things that the places they traded with and traded. And I'm not going to go through them all because it'll take me forty minutes just to do that part. Well, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but it says Tarshish was the mer was thy merchant by reason of the multitude of all kinds of riches with silver, iron, um, uh, can't see that tin and lead. They traded in thy, thy fairs. There used to be a competition, a football competition called the Fairs Cup, the European Fairs Cup, where any team that had a fair could 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 play in this cup, and that was the last thing that Newcastle won. All right, so everybody take notes there because they're all watching the match on Sunday. See if, see if Newcastle can win their first trophy since not the days of Tyre, but that's another story. Uh, Javan, Tubal, and Misha. 
They were thy merchants. They traded the persons of men and vessels of brass in thy market. Now, now Meshach particularly in Tubal, you'll remember from Ezekiel 38, to do with Moscow, to do with Russia. They traded the persons of men. And, and from, that, from that area of, of Russia comes a people called the Slavs, which is where we get the name, the word slave from. We get the word slave from, and, and here it is in Ezekiel 27, that the people from that area, they traded the persons of men. The house of Togomar with, um, with horses and horsemen. Uh, that, that, that's that's the, uh, the Slav part, just to explain. So a lot of Eastern European people, uh, Polish and um, uh, Bulgarians, they, they're Slavic people. So um, Dan also and Jevon going to and fro, Jevon's maybe Greece, uh, going to and fro, uh, in thy fairs, fairs bright iron, Cassian and Calmus were in thy market. Now Dan, uh, Dan was a tribe of Israel and, and Dan's land, well, the city of Dan uh, was as far up as you could go in Israel on the border of Phoenicia. The, 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 the tribal lands, their, their inheritance land was on the seaside. And Dan dwelt in ships, they were a seagoing tribe. And he had a lot to do with the Phoenicians. It's recorded here, there and uh, everywhere. And uh, uh, if you know the history of the tribe of Dan, did they turn into the Vikings in, from a place called Denmark? They turned into the Vikings again, people that were very good at sea. And you see in this one about Leif, Leif Erikson, AD 1000s, discoverer of an America. Uh, there's there's a, a, a confident belief that the Vikings reached America. Okay? And uh, they, they, they um, uh, but remember, they will have learned off the Phoenicians. If you ever see a Viking ship and a Phoenician ship, uh, the, what's known of them, they look very alike. They look very alike. And the Phoenicians, they're wise men with their pilots. And they had a lot to do with the Danites. So, yeah, but there's a strong, strong claim that the, the Vikings reached America. But there's also a claim that the Phoenicians reached America. So, uh, did the Phoenicians discover America? And uh, our, our mate Herodotus, uh, he said, he wrote uh, that um, uh, the Phoenicians had found a land beyond the Great Sea, the Atlantic, of navigable rivers. And, and other things, but in the, I can't remember the others. I remember the navigable rivers. They found it by accident when they were blown away. They were blown onto the island. Uh, uh, they, they lost their way in the Atlantic. And, and it described it a little bit. So there was always this claim was there. Uh, it says, it says in, uh, again, Ezekiel 27, Thy rowers have brought thee into great waters, and the east wind has broken thee in the midst of the seas. And as I say, the claim with, with th that they went to America Herodotus says, I haven't got the I haven't put the quote on a slide. Uh, but he said they were blown there. The wind blew them there. It wasn't that they knew it was there. Uh, this is this is um Yeah. So uh, the quote is not to do with the picture. It says a stone inscribed with Phoenician writing was allegedly discovered in Brazil. It tells a Phoenician ship which due to a storm was separated from a, a fleet sailing from Egypt around Africa. Uh, and, it, and it mentions it mentions uh, our pharaoh that we were talking about before. The the coin, uh, the other picture is a coin. It's the reverse of a coin. On the other side will be the picture of a king. Uh, and on the bottom of the coin, I'll show you a little bit of detail in a minute, uh, there is a claim that that is actually a map of the world under the horse. I'll show you it in detail uh, in, in, in a second. J just one other little thing before I forget. Uh, there's, there was a people in in Central America, South America, called the Mayans, the Mayans. And they had a way of measuring that nobody else on that continent had, but did exist in Israel and, and Phoenicia. So, you, you know, they're, they're little things and they're disputes and claims. It doesn't matter, really. I just, I just found it. I'm not saying they did. I just think it's interesting. So, so this, is, this is what's supposed to be the map. So you've got Asia, what's clearly the Mediterranean. That's clearly the Mediterranean with its two islands on it. And it's uh, that's the shape of the Mediterranean. That's the shape of Spain. That's Britain. So over there, what's that? And, it, you know, other people say it's writing, but, uh, yeah, there you go. But we've had that one. 
So back to um, that was that's a, a little. I'm not going to go through the rest of the description of the trades and the traders in the place, but there's lots of them. There's lots and lots and lots of them. Very very rich place. You know what I would have liked to have walked down Tyre High Street and had some of the street food because they had goats and lambs and all sorts of things, honey and balm and uh, um, uh, uh, lots and lots of money. You know the 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 um, the. The, the likeness to Manhattan is is, is, is quite a good one, really, uh, because it was rich as rich could be. So back to Ezekiel 26 is where the Lord was prophesying for its downfall. So so it starts off with the downfall in 26. 27 goes back to its wonderfulness, really, perfect in beauty. But we go back to 26 and it says, uh, and they shall make a spoil of thy riches and... and, and it, one thing in Ezekiel 26, it talks about Nebuchadnezzar and it says he, what he shall do. Then it talks about they. He's not talking about he anymore. He's talking about they without naming a name. And they shall make a spoil of thy riches and make a prey of thy merchandise. And they shall break down thy walls and destroy thy pleasant houses. And they shall lay thy stones and thy timber in the dust in the midst of the water. And they shall destroy the walls of Tyrus and break down her towers. I will also scrape the dust from her and make her like the top of a rock. And it shall be like a place for the spreading of nets in the midst of the sea. And... Uh, uh, so, so our next thing we're going to look at is three. It's about three hundred and thirty BC, I think. Uh, so Nebuchadnezzar is around about six hundred five eighty BC. So this is two hundred and fifty years later, two hundred and fifty years after this, this was written, two hundred and eighty years after this was written. Up comes Nebuchadnezzar. Up comes Alexander the Great to conquer the world. He conquered the world by the time he was twenty six. This man, twenty six years old, he conquered the world, and there's no stopping him at all. And and when he went past Tyre on his way south, he asked the people of Tyre. Um, he believed his his father was the god Hercules, kind of. And that was their main god in Tyre. And they had a temple to Hercules. So he sent, he sent ambassadors to Tyre uh, on the island and said, listen, can Alexander just come and, you know, uh, worship his father, see the temple to his father? They cut their throats. They cut their throats, right? They never did anything like that. They were the most diplomatic people, the smartest people when it came to avoiding trouble. And 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 here's here's the, the greatest warrior that's ever lived, and they cut his ambassador's throats. So uh, the wisdom seems to have disappeared. He was absolutely, absolutely, absolutely furious. I've got to stop saying things three times. Okay. The name Phoenician comes from... Uh, this is this is a maybe, by the way. This is not certain, but it's a it's a common maybe. The name Phoenicia comes from the phoenix, the name of a famous purple dye extracted from a, a special variety of shell. Now that, it's true that they were they were called the purple people, uh, and and they were the only ones. That, and this was it mentioned purple in 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 Ezekiel uh, twenty seven, uh, one of the places, and um, it was actually famous for. Now Alexander the Great didn't have modern weaponry, but if he did, he might have gone about it this way. He once had got the one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people eater, and, and they would have just done a job for him. If anyone can remember what year that was a hit, you're old. You're very old. So 1958. They didn't have one of them. So, so what he did, Alexander, so that they were on the island, this walled, uh, uh, fabulously walled, fabulously armed. They had a navy, don't forget. The Tyrians had a, a formidable navy. Yeah, mostly it's for trading, but if they want to turn it to something else, they'll turn it to something else. And uh, they knew what they were doing. And what Alexander decided to do, he was going to get to the islands, he was going to build what's called a mole. So uh, he, he put he put the dust, and, remember the Babylonians destroyed the city? A lot of that rubbish was still there, the stones would have still been there. He got everything he could and started to build towards the walls. At the front there, you've got a common thing in the ancient world. He went stupid in battle, you know. They didn't just run, run at each other, shouting and then do what the, the bare minimum. They were clever. So at the front of this mole, as they're building it, you've got these siege engines, in which basically are, are very high wooden uh, structures, buildings really. And at the top of those, they would have catapults to fire things over the walls. They'd have siege engines too, firing back at you. Uh, and so it would go. And uh, what the Phoenicians would do, they would send their ships around. And because this mole had timber in it, it included the trees, which is what the Lord had prophesied. They set it on fire. 
they'd set it on fire. I don't know where, where I've got it. Uh, so so th th this is, I quite like this one. So they're building and building the mole, the Tyrians are attacking it, they're setting it on fire. And what Alexander did, he he called in reinforcements from Cyprus and from a couple of other places in ships. And he surrounded the island and kept the Phoenician navy in harbour. They couldn't come out anymore. He couldn't come out. It still took him seven months to get a few hundred yards. It took him seven months. He was not going to stop. So uh, he built this uh, 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 Alexander's Dam, it's called there. Uh, one of the that's exactly what was prophesied, wasn't it? The dust would be in the sea and the and the timber would be in the sea uh, and um and they'd be burnt with fire. One of the one of the funny little things is he didn't actually get in over the mole. He broke in in the south. He broke through in the south and they, and they got into the, the great city uh, uh, through, the, through the southern harbour. And apart from people that, that uh, sheltered in the temple, uh, which which um, Alexander said, they can live, everybody else he killed. He killed them all. Right, absolute slaughter. Uh, so getting towards the end, and, you know, I, 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 I mentioned earlier on about why the Lord was nappy. And, uh, but I particularly thought this was interesting. In verse 18 of 28, it says, Thou hast defiled thy sanctities by the multitudes of thy iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So, it, it, it's just, it's a very sobering thing. You know, people are allowed to trade, and sometimes trade is amoral. It's not amoral, it's just amoral. It's business is business. But here it talks about the iniquity of, of their traffic, particularly focused on, um, particularly focused on the fall of Jerusalem and them selling the persons of God's people. That's what they did. They didn't need it, did they? They didn't need it. It was not like they were hungry, and this was their only way out. It's just straight up and down greed. That's what it is. It's straight up and down greed. And uh, uh, is is a, is a quiz question for you? You haven't got an answer. Who said this to who? We, we had this. I did this the other week in in um, in, in Medway, and um, uh, well, John the Baptist says it to the soldiers: "Be content with your wages." And I, I think that's such wise advice. It's such wise advice for any any kind of anything in life. Anything in life. Yeah, you want to prosper, yeah, but you, you certainly don't want. If, if if you're not content with your wages, Alexander the Great will come and get you. That's my warning. Okay, so just a little bit of an addition that, that I put on this one. Uh, there's a, a one time when he's talking about the king of Tyre, the Lord's talking about the king of Tyre. He uses particular descriptors, which are a little bit odd. Uh, yeah. So it says, moreover, the word of the Lord came to be saying, as he's talking about the king of Tyre, it says, thou hast been in the garden of God. Every precious stone was like covered in the sardis there, and it mentions them, the diamonds. And uh, uh, thou art the anointed cherub that covers. I have set thee so that was upon the holy mountain of God that was walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. And there's a couple of other things around that chapter that makes it look like it's talking about Satan. And you like, how can that be? Well, I don't know. I don't know. But it does actually still fit the king of Tyre. Eden, Tyre was a paradise. It was a paradise, you know, and uh, 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 they'd been in paradise. And uh, the anointed cherub that covers, uh, Tyre covered Carthage and, and Sidon and, and Cadiz, and a great protection upon uh, places where, where, where they landed. So it still does fit the king of Tyre. There may be a lot more to it than that. Uh, I'm not saying there isn't, but it still does fit uh, the man. It's, it fits the king. And I think when it talks about the king of Tyre, it says, Thou art a man. So, yeah. Nearly there. Uh, ancient Tyre and archaeology. If you go to, in the British Museum a couple of years ago, they had a, an exhibition on a, a king of Assyria called Arshi Bopapapal. Arshi Bopapapal, that's how you say it. And uh, one of the amazing things about it was one king, and it was all the things they had to do with this one king. And yet it was one of the paid for exhibitions. So it was a, it wasn't their normal stuff. They had special rooms set aside, and it was good, very good. But one of the most amazing things about it was how much stuff there was. There was a mountain of stuff. Every little piece interesting. 
right? Now, in the same museum, uh, when it comes to tyre, there is next to nothing. And that's true of museums all around the world. Next, How can the greatest city, because it, it's not like that it was short-lived. It was there for 12, 1400 years. Rich as rich could be. Wonderful. And they will have known what to do with money, you know. They, they knew what to do with money when it came to when it came to armies and ships. They don't think they didn't know what to do with it when it came to other things. There's nothing left. Where is it? That is why no one knows about it because he can't find it. And that's also um, the Lord saying, "I will make thee a terror, and thou shalt be no more. Though thou shalt be sought for, yet yet thou shalt never be found again," says the Lord. And uh, th this is this is um, this is um, you know it, it's interesting, isn't it? That that the evidence of the truth of the Bible is when something isn't there. <laughs> I, I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. Which which, which is which. Something not being there is a kind of evidence. It, it, it fits quite a lot of things. And um, this is the modern day tire. So it's called sour now. It's in Lebanon. It's modern Lebanon, and. Uh, after the eighties, so so, so the, that's where the that's where the island was, uh, where Alexander the Great built a mole that silted up and it's become just a big a big land bridge now. So it's all one thing. Uh, on Google Earth, you can go down, you'll see it quite easily. It's called Sour now. It's not called Tired anymore. And uh, the reason I call the the presentation the city that God destroyed a number of years ago, we had a guy that, in the assembly and he'd been in the Fijian army. And when he was in the Fijian army, he was uh, sent to Lebanon as part of the United Nations peacekeeping force after the Lebanese Civil War. And he told me that when he used to drive up and down the road, the main road that went past this city, he said, the locals call that the city that God destroyed. Today, he pointed out to people, he pointed out, say, that's the city that God destroyed. And... Um, well, there's more to it than 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 um, than um, Nebuchadnezzar and Alexander the Great. So after after Alexander the Great, the place was flattened, and uh, the Romans built stuff there. The Greeks built stuff there, and it was mentioned in the New Testament. We say, well, there's you know, there's still things there, and I, I would say, but it's not that city. It's not that city. That city's gone and can't be found. But the other thing is as well, if you read, I'm not going to read it out because, because I've gone long, but look it up in Wikipedia and Wikipedia tells you the history of it. And, and it's not, it's, they're not the only two that have, that have it, it, it's, it's rose and fell a number of times since Alexander. Like the waves of the sea, like the waves of the sea, it talks about the, the Egyptians were there for a while and the, I think the Ottomans were there for a while and it would, then it'd be totally empty again and then it would build up again. I think that's nearly it. Yeah, that's it. The end of the first long lesson.